Thursday night, and welcome to WWAF, uh, WW uh, After Five. It's our show about bars and lounges around Walt Disney World. With me tonight is my sister, Hillary Morton. I'm your host, Eric Morton. Um, unfortunately, the rest of the company's in Japan, so it's just just us, right? Tom's in Japan. Uh, Jason's on his way to Japan early in the morning. Jill is on her way to Japan early in the morning. Hillary just flew in, and I was like, I'm picking someone up at the airport to co-host a show with me, and she was kind enough to help. Hello, world. So we kicked this show off with a toast, the official toast, down mine. Up yours. That's how we do it. Now, uh, this show is all about the bars and lounges. We're going to explore uh, with a rotating cast of characters, perhaps, all the different bars and lounges around Walt Disney World. We know that everyone has a favorite. Maybe we'll find one that you haven't been to before or one that you hadn't considered. Uh, that's kind of my goal. Tonight, the show focuses on Dahlia Lounge. That's at Coronado Springs Resort. I'm sorry. <coughs> I hear a lot of noise. Oh, what is that? That's the fireworks. Oh. Uh, so uh, we have set up a camera in the backyard to show you the fireworks. Let's see. There we go. That's Happily Ever After live right now from the backside, from our backyard. Um... We'll cut to that every now and then if it makes you happy. I think everybody's happy that Happily Ever After is back. Yes. I know we are. I know Hillary hasn't seen it yet since its return. but Nope. But I definitely excited. hated what was there before. Well, there you go. Right from Hillary's mouth. Well, I didn't hate it. Yeah. No, I didn't like it. Hillary didn't even drop an F-bomb, so we're doing great so far. Not yet. Shout One minute out, in. Shout out to our brother, Andy Morton, who's watching back in Kansas. Thinking about you, buddy. And, uh... I want to show, I want to do a segment in a minute. I don't know if we need more fireworks or not. Um, during Boxed In, which is a show, by the way, you should tune in tomorrow night here on the same channel. Boxed In, we'll be unboxing, I don't know if it's all the merchandise from Tron, but it's an awful lot of the merchandise from Tron. Yes, Lee? You, you might want to give a little bit of an explanation. Somebody's asking whether this is pre-recorded or not. No. Nope. Uh, we are live. We are live after five. But we have pre-recorded some segments that we'll be presenting to you. I hope that's clear. Um, the first segment, though, and, and this happened on Boxed In, um, people were asking about themed rooms and things like that. And, and Lee had mentioned uh, that uh, Lee is uh, over here. Hello, Lee. Hello. Uh, I'm the in-studio audience. We, we in our home uh, did a, uh, a number of themed rooms, but our guest room is Haunted Mansion themed, and many people in the chat wanted to do a tour. Uh, so this segment is kind of, we call it, um, you know, what do we call it? Is it, uh, how WD, do you have a WDWAF room? It's, is there a room in your house that is WDWAF? And yeah. if so, what you can do is say, well, see these rooms. We're going to have two of them on tonight. Uh, one from Lee and one from our friend Axel's house. And I think we and, call it WDW Cribs. Okay, WDW Ooh, like Cribs, that. whatever. Like we'll that. do something. We'll, we'll do something with that. Okay. New show. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm stretched a little thin this week because I'm the guy running everything in the company while everyone's having fun in Japan. So I didn't have time to come up with that. That was good. W yeah. W Crips. Um, but if you have a room like that, maybe you'll get a chance to submit it. We'll give you instructions how to do that later. We're going to do a quick uh, room tour because people asked. And if you have rooms like this, we'd love to see them. Go ahead, Jake. All right. So this is uh, Lee's creation this is a haunted mansion guest room in our house we had a smaller guest room and we wanted to do something fun because we know a lot of our guests um are here for disney they like a theme so we're going to take you through here real quick obviously first of all lee the first thing that grabs people is this bedspread and you had this custom made right i did you can still get it um now that you're seeing this online i need to get online and find the shop i got it from and give them credit because they posted my picture. Uh, Poppy, that's a no-no. Poppy, no-no. Um, but I, they were selling a purple and black one and I sent them a message asking if I, if I could get a black and white one because I had a picture in my mind of wanting a black and white room. And they obliged. They obliged and put it on their website and I believe a few other people have bought it since then. And it blew up on Instagram. Now, one. oddly enough, we, we didn't do the the purple and green that a lot of people associate with Ponte Mansion. This is black and white. Those are some uh, Larry Dotson uh, prints there above the bed. 
and that wall is black. And uh, over here, uh, we just went with black curtains. Um, a couple of stretching room portraits in here. These are uh, LE set that I started collecting a long time ago. I've only been able to find two of them in the wild. There's only 250 of them. Uh, these are uh, Tim Rogerson. So I think that's correct. I think that's his name. And uh, yeah, so there's your guy standing on the uh, dynamite, of course. And over here, old Constance Hatchaway herself sitting on a headstone. So over here, just behind the door, we have a we have a we mounted a TV just because when people hi, there's me. And when people come to stay, they they like to watch TV. A little place to put their luggage. That was from the uh, yacht club, I believe. And then uh, over here, the chair. Poppy's been very interested in these. Uh, these plush hitchhiking ghosts um, that are kind of not normally around, but here they are. A little uh, chair in the corner, getting ready to haunt a mansion throw. They don't really go with the theme, but I haven't put them back away. Yeah, these don't match the theme, but here they they're are. They're officially haunted, or uh, Halloween decorations. All right, and then up here on the shelf we have, well, there's that lantern, and all four sides of the lantern are different uh, stretching room porches. In fact, those were a gift to Boxed In. And also a gift to Boxed In, uh, this handmade uh coffin so that was sent in actually our own lucas on staff made this etching and then uh up here we have some just random hitchhiking ghosts there there's our gargoyle very fearsome he'll protect you while you sleep though that's what i'm told more things to get i want one of the shields mm -hmm. for the wall this is a work in progress there's more stuff on the wall there and uh, just another print, Haunted Mansion print there. There's our ceiling fan. Uh, and then, of course, the famous host of ghosts. Uh, these will go off in the middle of the night and scare people sometimes. Did that one work? There we go. So we have a number of these. We used to have all of them, but they came out with more. Old Culpepper Klein. There he goes. So uh, every now and then we'll have guests here and... They'll come in here at night and get spooked out by it. And uh, there's uh, another little Haunted Mansion uh, thing. Obviously, the Madame Leota. I don't know if this will still fog. It won't fog, but it will. No, it she'll but if you put water in it, it'll fog up. A couple headstones. So, of course, we have the uh, Disney World slash Tokyo Haunted Mansion here. And then we have the uh, California version of the California one here at Disneyland. We have Master Gracie in the bedside photo. Oh, yeah, Master Gracie. There's his photo, bedside, of course. And uh, hold on, let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. There's Master Gracie, some flowers, and a little dresser for our guests. And... Uh, that's really it for the Haunted Mansion room. We, uh, it's uh, like I said, always a work in progress. Well, uh, how about that? That is uh, a starting point because I know even on this show later, there's a room that takes it and amps it up a little bit more. It's a little something you can do. I know with these uh, modern houses, they build an ornate master suite and all this big open Pri space primary suite primary so owner's suite and then all the guest bedrooms are kind of like a postage stamp this is my office uh, across the hallway of the guest room you know disney theme but we want to hear from you so um sent on twitter hashtag wwaf with a with pictures and video of your house or you can hashtag wdw cribs not, and, uh, maybe next week we'll put your put your room on. Not featured in that video is the amount of farts that I've buried in that bed. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear about that. Hillary. Well, okay. Here, don't forget your super chat. Oh. Oh, we do have a super chat. In fact, this is important because it's our first ever super chat on this show. Uh, it's from Fire Chief Sixty Six. Good luck, Eric, on new show. Great to see Hillary with you. Well, thank you hey, very much. Hey, thank you. She got here just in time, and she got enlisted to be on Box Ten tomorrow because. Oh, am I doing that too? Another super chat from Andy Superworld. Oh, Andy oh, Superworld, Lord. our brother. Five bucks, a dollar each for Erky, Hinky, Lily, Jake, and Poppy. Now you have, now you have money for the steakhouse dancers. And we know that this means hashtag all the Mortons. All the Mortons are here. We're all here. 
All right, great. Well, we're going to get into our segment in just a few minutes. First, we're going to kick it to a quick commercial. We'll be right back here on WWAF. Are you tired of the same old bordering food and drink options? Mexican food, Asian food, Italian food. Well, join us for something we call Hawaiian food at Polynesian's Resort. We've got everything you're looking for, from food to drinks to entertainment. Celebrate special occasions at Patty Ohana's, where Moana herself will come spank the lucky birthday boy with her shillelagh. Or find out what our mixologists have been up to with the lapu lapu you love, but served inside a potato with real Irish whiskey. Over at Kona O'Brien's, our top of the Aloha breakfast is not to be missed with Tonga Shepherd's Pie and more. And for lunch, we're cooking up some corned beef and cabbage pot stickers that'll make you want to kiss the Maui Blarney Stone out in our lobby. For those in a hurry, we've got counter service downstairs at Captain Cooks of Dublin. In the evening, wind down over at Trader Shamrock's Grog Grotto, or out there on the terrace, you can listen to your favorite U2 songs on the ukulele. And of course, we have that world-famous Leprechaun Door Whip. And if you think this accent is shite, wait until you hear our staff talk. So capture a little luck at the fiti and drag the whole family down for the best and only Hawaiian joint in the world. It's more than just a dumb idea. It's a lifestyle going all the way back to our founder, Roy O'Disney. Come find us at the end of the rainbow and tell him Don O'Brien sent ya. The mics are hot. We're back. A little closer. A little awkward being that far away in this gigantic office. Of it's mine. huge. Um. I don't even know where Poppy is. Honestly, she got lost. Oh, she's day. in. She's over in the recesses <coughs> of the of of your office. It's so big. She's hiding. Yonder. Poppy dear. <laughs> no, Poppy. Uh, so big in Disney news. Oh, here's what? something big in Disney news. They announced today annual passes are going to go back on sale. <sighs> You're not just limited to that pixie dust pass. And we have trams at all parks. No. Okay. So if I have the Pixie Dust Pass, which I currently have, can I upgrade? I, now I can't because I'm just a you peasant. You can when you renew. It's coming but up. then you'll be able to, I think you'll be able to upgrade once this goes live. But you have to pay the full difference or something like that. So you're probably better off waiting until, oh, look, the bartender. Oh, my right. gosh. Thank you so much. This is so great. Oh, I have an assistant. Oh. Hey, Poppy. Poppy has come all the way across the office now. I can even see her. Yes. Uh, Jake, do we want to check in on the fireworks? We're getting close to the finale before we go to our, our main segment. Yep, five minutes. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Allergies. Oh, that's that villain's part, right? Yeah. Is that the, is that the pirate's part? Hmm. I guess the pirates aren't villains. Pirates are very nice. All right. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse so, uh, the main segment. So, what we did was we decided to go to Dahlia Lounge, which is at Coronado Springs. Hillary, have you been to Dahlia I Lounge? I have. It's wonderful. And this is a little bit of a bar review. Oh, Poppy's here. Thank you. This is a, everyone demands Poppy, so here she comes. Um, a little bit of a bar review. It's a little bit of a conversation. For this one, I enlisted uh, Piano Rob and Jill Diffendahl. And... Uh, we drink Sorry. a little bit, we eat a little bit, we talk a little bit, and we teach you a little bit about Dolly in case you didn't know. So, uh, Jake, go ahead and uh, let's, let's roll that segment. Get comfortable. Everybody, it is time for WW After Five. Yes, WWAF is in the house where we're going to review bars and lounges throughout the Walt Disney World property. And today's lounge is none other than Dahlia Lounge. That's right, way at the top of the Grand Destino Tower is Dahlia Lounge, one of my favorite spots on the property. 
they're getting ready to open. Uh, we do this after five. It is, it is not quite five o'clock yet. So I'm gonna have to wait a few minutes and uh, we're gonna meet some friends, have a few drinks. Ah yes, Dahlia Lounge. Located in the Grand Destino Tower at Disney's sprawling Coronado Springs Resort, this should be a great place to start our new series. Grand Destino Tower opened in 2019 and features gorgeous walls of lanterns as you enter and a stunning two-story lobby which, well, like the rest of the building, merges the influences of Mexico, Spain, and the American Southwest. If you look closely, you may even see Walt Disney. Oh, there he is. And across the lobby, the lovely Lillian Disney as well. Now, there used to be some wild conspiracy theories that Walt was born in Spain. Maybe that was part of this whole influence, but those rumors were debunked. Uh, but he has a Spanish connection that is both interesting and a little bit bizarre. You see, according to legend, in 1944, Walt Disney and famous Spanish surrealist Salvador Dali both happened to be at a dinner party at the home of Jack Warner. Yes, that's Jack Warner, the, the Warner Brothers guy. Warner Brothers, you've heard of them? Anyway, Dolly was staying with Warner while working on a Hitchcock film called Spellbound. Turns out the two had a mutual admiration for each other, and something of a friendship was formed. He even agreed to create a short together called Destino. Walt assigned artist and Imagineer John Hench, yes, that John Hench, who among other things designed buildings you may have seen before, like Space Mountain or Cinderella Castle. Anyway, he assigned Hench to work with Dolly on that project, and the project eventually kind of moved to the back burner and was not completed until some 58 years later when actually Hench himself was brought in to finish the short. Almost six decades later, but we've all been there, right? Anyway, up on the 16th floor, Disney created Dahlia Lounge. This lounge celebrates the relationship of Walt Disney and Salvador Dali in surrealist style with touches of Spanish modernism. The light fixtures are like dandelions here. I think that's pretty cool. And the ceiling murals maybe suggest a, a woman's hair. Photos of Walt and Dali and John Hench are on full display. The menu is decidedly Spanish, featuring tapas, sangria, and much more. But I couldn't keep these amazing views and this menu to myself, so I enlisted the help of some of my friends. All right, it's after five. Uh, we're now on the balcony, uh, the Grand Destino Tower balcony. Uh, up here, Dahlia looks the opposite direction from the Magic Kingdom, so you cannot see the Magic Kingdom. Get some good views here. Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, we got some Galaxy's Edge over here, all the way down to uh, Wide World of Sports. You can even see uh, off in a distance there. Uh, well, that's pretty far. In the center there is, a, I think that's Celebration Hospital near our studio. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 15 different drink menus to select, to sub-select after I pick what I want. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a, that's a real lot. Like, I should have done my homework before we came to start looking. What do you normally drink? So, I don't drink a lot. Yeah. So, whenever I do something like this, I usually don't do beer. It's too heavy for me. Yeah. I've gotten too... Is that, is that an old man thing to say? I do... Vodka is my usual go-to. They have a... Vodka? Steam. You don't have to order anything special. I'm going to order something special. We're in a special yeah. place. Right, do we have a, do we have a winner, Rob? I am going to try the Sangria Teeny. All right, good choice. I'm assuming it's a hybrid of a Sangria and a Martini, or I'm going to be very wrong. I'm going to try the Sangria Tinta. Tinta. Ooh. Sangria Tinta. That's uh, Granasa Old Vines, Torres, Magdala, Naran, Hastel, Mediterraneo. Uh, that's orange. That's why I didn't try to pronounce the ingredients. Uh, Rob, the drink orders are in. You're yes. nice and relaxed. Talk to me about how you end up as a legendary piano player. Where do you want, where do you want me to start? Right from the beginning. When did, you're like a, you grew up in New York, right? Uh -huh. my, gr my grandmother was a piano teacher. Oh. Uh. So when I was five-ish, she started teaching me. I never took it seriously. I did school band, you know, public yeah, school yeah, band, yeah. clarinet, bass clarinet, tenor saxophone. Then high school I did no band because I wanted to play sports. Yeah. So that was not much. I always played and then I went to I went to college for marketing and then I did a Disney college program. And then you were just playing piano all the time and, and then I was always playing and then and there was no piano bars in the Northeast. 
there are yes. now, yeah. but back then there wasn't. So when I was like, what's a piano bar? I'm like, you know, I just like, I come and I, people request all I yeah. play them. And that was, that was Howl at the Moon days. And then I just, that's, it's almost 20 years of piano playing now. So uh, you're from New York and you're piano guys. Is there, is there a lot of pressure to just uh, worship Billy Joel? I, I don't feel pressure. That's what I grew up listening. So you're not to. under pressure. That was that's from, from Billy Joel. That's, I get it. <laughs> um, I love Billy Joel. I, in fact, if there wasn't so many people that did Billy Joel tribute yeah, yeah. bands, I think I would do one and do it. I mean, good. who are other big like piano people that really made it big mainstream? Like Corey Amos, Elton John, Elton John, this him, yeah. uh, Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, Ray Charles, Bruce Hornsby. Yeah, Ben Folds. Yes, some, I guess. But like, there's, uh, there's piano. I mean, I like doing what I do because I get to play so many different types of music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, my, my shows are never the same. Yeah. It's always a new show. No, that's great. So that's what's nice. That's a cool story, and your grandmother taught you. But yeah, and then, well, I mean, yada, yada, yada. Long story short, I, tr I tried to open a piano bar in downtown Orlando. It was open about 14 months. It didn't work as well. And then I needed work, and Jelly Rolls was looking for a guy. Yeah, well, there you have it. And now you're just a traveling piano bar. And now I just do it, yeah. Now I'll, I'll go wherever. All right, so the drinks have arrived. This is the Sangria Tinta. This is the Sangria Teeny. There he is. What's the huh? difference between a Tinta and a Teeny? It sounds like some dirty thing in Italy or something. <laughs> wow. Well, boys have a Tinta. You never, <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> I, I hope I got the right one the right kind. <laughs> All right, first sip, we're gonna get your first impression of this, this drink. That's really good. Yeah? That's really good. You it's feel bad about making fun of it? I was only, I, I, it made me feel bad. I don't know, I was supposed to feel bad. Um, no, I don't feel bad, but it's good. It, it, it tastes like a, like a, it tastes like a sandwich. Yeah. It's good. All right. All right, here we go. I feel like I need the, remember that old game, the Fruit Ninja? Chocolate. Yes, yes. I need the Fruit Ninja to come help me get through this drink. There's a lot going on here. I miss Fruit Ninja. I like that it has ice in it. Yeah, right. Oh, this is really good. It kind of reminds me of like a punch like my parents used to make in that party. Maybe yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe my mom was appropriating Spanish culture back then. There's so much fruit and stuff in sangria in general that that makes sense for both of these. Oh, this is delicious. I've been missing out. I've been drinking too much bourbon. There we go. It's, and plus the ice, it makes it really refreshing. I really like it. You heard it here. Oh, you just showed up. Hi. So I appreciate you braving this uh, oh, we this tell that story. restaurant. Yeah. Uh, the first time we came here, we brought Jill, and she uh, like quick stop, like nope, and wouldn't come and, out here. Like backed up, like against the glass, went inside and would not come outside. Oh, that's funny. No. That is true. I'm terrified of heights. Jill Dippendahl, not afraid of anything. I know, except happens. except plummeting to my death. I'm okay with heights unless I think about it. Yeah. If I if I start thinking I'm about how I'm not a big thinker, I'm, so. Daisy. What's in the tequila daisy? Song? It is Don Julio Blanco tequila. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, mm. you got the bocadilla. Uh, so we've got tequila, Torres, Magdala, Naranjas del Mediterraneo, which I think Naranjas is orange. orange. Yeah. Um, so some sort of orange liqueur, and then grapefruit, lime, hibiscus, and soda water. I'm sure you'll love it. So something in between like a, a mule and a, and a margarita. So uh, we got the ham and cheese bocadillo for the table. Best uh, snack. Bocadilla. Uh, boca means mouth. Dio means Ronnie James Dio. Shove Put it them in. both together and Shove you have a around. rockin' sandwich. All right, let's try the ham and cheese bocadillo. Uh, I will say, full disclosure, this is one of my favorite uh, light bites on a property. Yeah, it's definitely one of the best lounge snacks, I think. Yeah. Is that true? Look, Rob, Rob you go to, first. Try, I'm, try I don't, one of those bad boys in half. I don't, I don't think I've had this. Oh, uh, 
your life is about to be changed. Should, should it have been in the food tournament? Maybe. Yes, it should have been in a food tournament. Ever, I, I, oh no, Lee's here. Everyone's favorite squaw. redhead is here. We have more squaw. Squaw. This you is have great. for a short time. You got that honey I on the bread. Yeah. Yeah. Short yeah, it. Wow, what a tasty thing. It's ham, you said? Yeah. Or is it like, like a prosciutto? I think it's like a Well, prosciutto yeah, yeah. actually, is like we, we classify prosciutto as a type of ham, but prosciutto actually means ham. So, I don't really know. All right, Jill, you got that uh, tequila daisy? I got a tequila daisy right here, so it's it. pretty oh, and beautiful. pink. It's got that nice sort of grapefruity flavor, like color. You get, you get a little lime garnish with the bamboo. Uh, Yes, sir, I love the Beefy King shirt. Beefy King in Orlando Institution. But the material is like whenever I wash it and dry it, it grabs whatever comes off of everything else. All the hair, all the dog hair, all the lint. This shirt is like those those balls of lint. Don't you have like lint balls or something? Yeah, it's like that. It just grabs everything. Thank so you. then I have to thank you for wearing that out today. Yeah, no, no I, 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 I ran trying it through to impress the, you. I ran it through the uh, the tape thing. What's it called? Lint roller. Lint roller. Ran through the lint roller a few times. The tape thing. No, the tape thing. What do you call the SD card? I would have called that the tape thing. Uh, that's an SD. I know. I told uh, Jill, oh, we're gonna videotape today. I was like, what is it? 1986. We're not videotaping anything. I still say I'm my JBC uh, camcorder. I still say record shows. What's the other? Thing? Say something else you do record DVR. them. I'm gonna DVR it. Mm -hmm. I have, I was telling Jason, I found a Sony Handycam that takes DVD RW, kind of old, right? Yeah. In my, that I had, like, with my stuff. Tell the kids what a DVD is. <laughs> yeah. this is if you go to Disneyland. This is even, this is like a miniature one. This is a small digital video disc. But before that, when I was stationed in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, I bought thank this. Thank you for your service. <laughs> thank you, Lee. Um, you're welcome. Uh, I bought this state-of-the-art camera, and it's a JVC, and it uses VHS-C, the little tiny VHS tapes. Then you have to put them in an adapter that's like a full-size yeah. VHS tape and stretch them Wait, out so you can play them out. Tell the kids what VHS is. Uh, we had a conversation about home food delivery 45 seconds ago. You can't have that in a VCR conversation. <laughs> Um, I don't, I actually don't know what VHS stands for, but I remember it's War with Betamax. Yeah. Right? And so, you would go to the video store. We used to rent, okay kids, on like a Friday, like my parents were separated and we'd like stay with dad on the weekend. The so Friday night was like, we would go to, a, it's called Adventureland Video, and we would rent a VCR. You'd and then, the we would rent the VCR from them. It came in like a little suitcase, and then you would pick out the videos you wanted, and there was this ever decreasing uh, aisle of Betamax as it lost popularity even though it was, well, it was allegedly the, superior technology. It was the same thing as the Blu-ray board. I love that we're watching our family like experience. Yeah. <laughs> this is right. what this supplemental entertainment. This is where you get a dolly. Yeah. of what it's like to come to these resorts to enjoy the um, non-parks life that Disney has to offer. Because there's lots of Disney to do outside the parks. Yeah, and this SD card, 64 gigabytes. That would be 10,000 of those offices that you see the woman uh, in a computer programming scene on Spaceship Earth, right? Wait, were you not recording from when the cheese plate showed up? I don't know if I got the cheese plate. There's our cheese plate. I don't know if I was recording. I don't know. This is what happened to me with Tinkerbell. Technology. So, sometimes. are we starting this? Well, we've gotten uh, beer now. Um, apparently, the beginning of my second drink, I, I stopped recording a, a very interesting conversation. We are discussing our top five Disney uh, soundtracks from Disney animated features. And, uh, Rob, what was your first one? What was I, your said, first I said Goofy Movie. Goofy and movie. I named all the songs because people don't realize That's the, a wild wealth, card the to wealth me. of songs that come out of that movie. Yeah, I just haven't seen it. And we talked about it. The, the impetus to this was somebody tweeted, 
that fire was invented on May 18, 1999, when Phil Collins dropped that Tarzan soundtrack, which is not in my top five. Which but I, a good and I love it. I just want to make sure I say that I do love that soundtrack, and he did great. But as a total soundtrack, I agree, it's not in the top. Yeah. Jill, well, you're one. Well, you get one automatic into the top five. So we talked about Moana. Rob doesn't. Believe Moana belongs in the top five, which I respect. He's not a Lin Manuel guy, right? It's He's a style a thing. I'm not, guy, a, and, yes. I, and, I get and I didn't say it negatively. I said right. it respect. Right. But I get that Lin Manuel. I, I understand that Lin Manuel is polarizing, and I'm not saying this from being like, oh my god, like I think everything Lin Manuel touches turns to gold. Like I do not think he is like God's gift. But I but love pretty damn good. the Moana soundtrack so All right. much, and like I will drop everything I'm doing and start singing along as soon as I hear a Moana song. And I get an automatic all the way through, and I'm not gonna waste it. I gotta protect Hercules. I think. I think Hercules is amazing. I know that there are people that love Hunchback and Tarzan and, and of course, Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, um, Little Mermaid. Hercules is super underrated. Well, Hercules had and that problem. not just it, go it the distance, right? Right, right? But I will tell you this now. Hercules is also an Alan Menken. Yeah. I don't think that's his best work. There are some soaring parts of song, emotional parts you know of what? songs. Look, and go I the distance. Yeah. It's always my top two Disney songs ever are between mm -hmm. Go the Distance and You'll Be in My Heart. Yeah. They always go like that. So I love that soundtrack. Now we talked about you're you're a New York guy, right? What about yeah. Oliver and Company? Oliver and Company is listen, don't be dissident. The, um, obviously don't the, you the Billy we Joel talked song, about the Huey Lewis song that Billy opens that movie yeah. is awesome. But I forgot the name the of The Power of Love. Oh, wait, that's Back to the Future. That's Back to the Future. But, you know, the whole soundtrack is... Amazing. I think Billy really was on there. Yeah, there's... All right, so our three in you the know, top five up. are going to be Goofy Bo Movie, Bo Moana, Moana Hercules. Hercules, and then we have to debate two more. I, I know what I would like the two to be, but I know that I don't get to you just get, pick you, one. Oh, you pick one and see them both I'll tell you what the two are. I, th okay. I think Lion King and Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. I so Nightmare I Before Christmas. I only know that this is Halloween song. You know what's what's this? Maybe not. I know I know the Oogie Boogie. What's the Oogie Boogie? Oogie, 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 Oogie song. Yeah, Oogie song. I mean, Sally, Sally has a cool song. Oh got her like painful haunting ballad about okay. how she's in love with Jack and like. And he's I'm gonna say something to controversial. Me. I've said this before. There are people that love Jack Skellington and Nightmare Before Christmas. And there are people that love Baymax and Big Hero 6, and they're, they're all exactly the same people. And I'm not those people. I don't think that's true. Oh, I don't think that's true. I don't no. think that's true. And those are two very... And maybe the same people that love Hunchback and Notre Dame. Don't get me wrong. I love yeah. Big Hero 6. Big Hero 6, if Frozen didn't come out that year, Big Hero 6 did bang in the box office. That was fantastic. But Frozen just overshined it because of what it was. Yeah, it was quite a sense. I remember, I was at Magic Kingdom first time I heard it. Oh, Lee has opinions. I do. I'm, am I allowed to share this? Would you yeah. like to share this? Lee I, has opinions. No, she I... took a drink and a half. And I, just, she was like she was no, I don't know I'm that I agree go. with no. that. Only because I feel I got like Baymax, um, Big Hero 6, whatever, gears toward people who um, like anime. Yeah. That's and definitely not true. because, like, I didn't see them at the same time, so they weren't competing for me. I was not a fan of Big Hero Six at all. Did not like oh, anything I, about it. I, so, I like it. Okay, so Lion King. Yeah. Uh, your your two that you want to submit are Lion King and Nightmare. Well, well let, let me just say why for for Lion King too. Besides all the songs that you already know and love, the Circle Live, Hakuna Matata, you, you also get the Elton John versions, which are which are a different thing. But it's the it's the uh, like the song, the This Land song when Mufasa's and the clouds yeah. and stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of that background stuff. Do it again. Brought. What's he do? When he's in the clouds and stuff. Yeah. Remember. Remember. Who you remember. Are. Which, by the way, pairs perfectly with Go the Distance. In Happily Ever After, Simba. Oh, it does, fair. Yes. <laughs> When they start throwing out quotes by those people yeah. during a song like that, like it's just meant to make you want to cry. That's, yep. what it, that's what it's meant for. That's the moment of the show that tells you what the show is really about. Yeah. 
Right? But, it's not about girlfriends and boyfriends. It's about who you are. And Mufasa schools us all. But that's why I think it drives it. Whereas every every the other ones in that Renaissance era, they it's but they they like one long score, which is great too. Yeah. Like I could show you with Beauty and the Beast, that bridge that he uses in Bell oh. is the same bridge as in something there that wasn't there before. It's yeah. Like, it's like one long. Oh no, it's score like it's like Les Mis, right? Where there's these recurring little. Yeah. Yes. Like yes. Musical motifs. Mm. Yes. Okay, so the two that you want. To submit Lion King and Nightmare Lion, before Lion King and Nightmare. Chill. I'm you trying to think what I two, want to say. We'll to so one thing I do want to say. You don't have to argue. You don't have to. I, I don't know that I can, to be honest with you, but I do. I want to say the following, which is uh, Big Hero 6 will always have a place in my heart because literally Fall Out Boy is like one of my top three favorite bands of all time. And I love that song, and I love that my favorite band of all time was in a Disney movie. Have you heard their version of What's This from that Before Christmas? Uh-huh. So. uh-huh. <laughs> They're there, too. And I love, it's nice to know that, like, your, like, emo pop punk, like, favorite, like, early angst yeah. band uh, is also Disney fans. I don't know. I, that, like, I that don't know that happy. that's... Yes. yes, they wrote it for the movie, yes. and then they wound up putting it on their yeah. own album afterwards because it was so good. Which I'm glad they were Which allowed is, to do. By the way, there's and like a like, history here of kind of alternative bands doing stuff and then getting pigeonholed into doing Disney stuff. Well, yes, and no. like, <laughs> they might be giants. Ask for they might be giants. Now, I'd, every day might be giants. Might, I'll, and that, if you ask, if you ask yeah. that uh, Amazon lady in your speaker. To play They Might Be Giants, I guarantee you it's wow. all Disney stuff you didn't even think about. Yeah. Well, they also do a lot of kids Same thing stuff with, um, a very I love Bowling for today. Soup. Bowling for Soup. They did the, once they did the Phineas and Ferb and all that stuff, it yeah. was like a totally different look for them. So, I got panic well, in the disco. I got, <coughs> I've gotten to talk with Jared. Oh, he's, he's hilarious. Man. So hilarious. And and he loves it. They they opened up the show here with the Phineas and Ferb song. Which they, he actually said, he goes, we're not going to play this at any other show. We'll play it here. They're like, but I saw them in, in concert one time, and he, he's like, all right, I guess we have to play this because this is the theme song for the number one animated show in the world at the time it was. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. All but right, it's so fun, but it's funny. I'm, I'm taking Jill's time. Yeah. I don't, yeah. But also, like... They put Panic in the Disco and Frozen 2, which I also love, and then like Fall Out Boy discovered Panic in the Disco and yada yada, and it's a big circle of life, which maybe comes back to the Lion King kind of deserves to be in this top okay. five. I don't know that I can think. We had talked about like of the other big golden era movies, which soundtrack is best, and I kind of I, I think I'm going with I think Lion King is the best soundtrack of those movies. I, I don't think I want to argue that. And so we I think old ones. I think no. Well, I mean, old, I'm okay old. with that. We didn't do like eighty nine. We didn't like, do like Alice in Wonderland or no. Peter Pan. I'm okay with that. I yeah. just want to make sure and that like, there I'm, might be somebody watching this. Going, I'm say. the biggest Alice. What fan about bed dubs and broomsticks? Yeah. yeah, Dumbo. Oh gosh. Uh, so there are some really good. There are some. You said animated. There are some really, really, good. Some, yeah. some okay. really good songs. Lee loves. Uh, I mean, obviously, some of the songs from Cinderella are great, but it it's a little bit more. It's a, a different, different era, right? It's a different era, and it's a different style. You're not putting on your Beats by Dre and listening to a lot of Cinderella music. And you're picking basically one, maybe two songs from but each it, of those movies. Yeah, those movies either. were more song beats as opposed to, like, sound. Everything else was right. sort of, like, background melody. It wasn't So sound. your Lion King, is Lion King your only, your sole submission here? Well, I'm going to not argue. We talked about Nightmare Before Christmas. I, I think there's so much about the music in that movie that sets the, like, it, it's it's part of the world building. Like, and it's constant. It's constant, and it's ethereal and creepy, and of course, you know, that's what you were going to, that's what you wanted right. for that. That's exactly what you got for that. And it just, it works so well, and it, it's so much a part of the film. You know, if we talk about is the movie as good without the It's music. not like very sing songy, right? You know, you don't leave the theater singing it. I mean, some of it. It's do. more. Some of it's very catchy. I think it's, yeah. you know, what's this? What's this gets stuck in your head? I think What's This, by the way, is one of the best Christmas songs uh-huh. ever written. All right, so are those your two as well? Yours match Rob's. I, I think I'm going to agree with Rob. So my votes I'm, don't matter. I'm not going to. I don't think they I'm going to. Those two are in. Mine usually don't anyway. That's why I'm a. That's why I don't like to be a panelist on March Madness. I just like that. Wait, I'm just curious. So what would you have thrown in there? Oh, uh, either 
or both of Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. And the reason is because I think I was a I was a teenager when Little Mermaid came out, and it was a renaissance of Disney. So it was like, oh, they're doing this now. They're not doing these kind of see, like lo-fi. Over your Hercules. I don't know because I, I I agree. Like I like those movies both better than Hercules. But when I listen to Hercules, I'm like, man, I forgot about this song. Man, I forgot about that song. Man, I forgot about the muses. Like, I all the songs the muses are singing. The songs by the muses are amazing. You the songs. Yeah. About the songs of Beauty and the Beast. You well, I've forgotten all about all the Nightmare Before Christmas songs. So we can probably. You see how? If you want to get crazy really quick, mm -hmm. you could probably parallel all your songs in each of those movies. So Her Hercules, your muses is your opening number. Yeah. Which would be Circle of Life or Bell. Mm -hmm. Those, those, those. Yeah. Or and now, I don't think Little Mermaid's as good. It's Fathoms Below. When they're, when, they're, when they're on the, the, the sailors are on the boat. Yeah, but really, I think when you get into the story is the... No, but I'm just saying we can go one at a time and go yeah, like, right. I, I know, the first song, I, I know, the I know who the sidekick song is. I know who the song is yeah. when they're a kid. I know the, the love song. They all have the same formula. They're, they're, all, right. they're all in there. Yeah, I'm not... I, this I'm doesn't... Really I don't get money for being right here. With our musical expert. It's the only thing I know. He's got compelling arguments. No, but I was thinking like, like you have Akuna Matata and The Lion King. The comparable song to that in Beauty and the Beast is Be Our Guest. Okay. The comparable song to that in Hercules is A, gu a Guy Like You. Yeah, that, that's not a great one. But, but that's what I mean. And uh, Under the Sea is the comparable one in Little Mermaid. So you're really putting Hakuna Matata up against Under the Sea in that yeah. case. I'm, I mean, I think without a list of all the songs in front of me, it would be hard for me to like dispute you. You want to go to the love songs? I feel like we've stumbled upon, like, you could build this, like, comparison into, like, a whole, like, TikTok series. I probably, I probably could. Yeah. That's what's going like, to make me famous. Let's put these two songs next to each other and compare how they're, like, serve yeah. the same purpose in the movie. and yet they all do different. that. Yeah. It's, it's the opening number. It's the finale. It's the love but song. But you have the, the gospel truth song. and the... Uh, and the, the, the Muses stuff in Hercules really gets So you know what, really, you know what stuff is really I'm sad amazing. about Hercules? Yeah. The gospel truth, for me, takes place of what should be a villain song, and I would love Hades to yeah. have a song. Oh, oh. that makes sense. Scar, Scar, Scar's got Be Prepared, yeah. Gaston's got Gaston, Wait, Ursula's no, got even, Poor Unfortunate oh. Fools. Tom Jones and he love for Cusco. Yeah, and then That's, there's... <laughs> I love that song. It's not unusual for people to forget about that. Uh, but you know what I mean? It is interesting when I put... Empire's Your Groove is a fantastic song. Um, love, love songs, it's, uh, it's Kiss the Girl. That's a good one. It's a whole new world. That's a good one. Can You Feel the Love Tonight? That's a good one. And I Won't Say I'm in Love. I love that one. Pink pajamas, penguins on the bottom. It's great, Pink but pajamas, it's not the best of that bottom. group of songs. Yeah. I think if you broke them down song by song and stacked them up against no. each other, you could no. not say that. No, because there's, there's something the to be song. said for no, this my... sum of things is greater than its individual parts. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you can have really individual parts that are not as good as the sum of something else. Yeah. Well, but I will, I, I, I will, I will submit, you can, Lion King, I just, I feel like I don't have enough familiarity with Nightmare Before Christmas. I, Danny Elfman's got a very deep library of songs. Oh, that uh, going go. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, man, I know you don't have a lot of time, but mm -hmm. that and Goofy movie, you should watch all, right. all the I'll watch through. the Goofy it, movie, it and, and every time I try to watch Nightmare Before Christmas, I turn it off. Why, though? I don't know, I think, I just think I don't like stop motion, stop motion animation. Yeah. Oh, but it's so good. Like, oh, I love stop motion animation. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, we could have an entire segment where we talk about awesome stop motion animation. Like, Wallace and Gromit, or like, yeah. You used to watch, like, late night Cartoon Network stuff. Gumby. Like, moral oral. Gumby, oh God, I did I like, I did like Gumby. Gumby. My dad was a huge I, Gumby fan, so I watched Gumby as a kid. I, I did I like Gumby, and so cool. there's some of those, uh, there's some of those Chris, old school Christmas specials that oh, are yeah, like yeah. A Rankin and Bass. Snowman. Rankin and Bass. All right, but our top five. Okay. Goofy movie, Moana, Hercules, Lion King, and Night, Night Before Christmas. It's not a bad top That's five. Have it's for not music. A bad now, enough about that. What about this bar? What do you think of Dahlia Lounge? Did you show the view? We looked at the view. We've done. We've done a lot of that. This is one of. The, I. It's I hidden gem, right? I don't go to a lot of the bars in yeah. general, and this is one of the few that I have gone to and revisited. Especially, I mean, right now, first of all, look how quiet it is, although it's getting more crowded. Yeah. And the view. Except this damn guy on the guitar. <laughs> the, 
Is that Esteban? He used to have infomercials, right? I'm a little surprised. I don't want to say I'm surprised at the music. I guess it gives a feel to the environment, but it's it's loud and Yeah, it is a little loud. Yeah. But I mean this is in terms of ambiance, this is top tier at Disney. The and drink the drink everything. menu is deep. How, deep. Many, how many theme parks do you have a view of? Everything but Magic Kingdom? Right. Yeah. yeah. You can see every Epcot, park except Magic Kingdom. Studios. Animal Kingdom over there. And, and, and you also get Blizzard, and Blizzard Beach. Beach. Yeah. And celebration. So, no, this is, the view here is unbelievable. The view here is only, is only second to uh, Top of the Contemporary. I, every food item I've had here has been a winner. And the, the drink menu is so deep. I I can't recommend this enough. I give this a 9.3. What so, about you, Jill? So, uh, sort of converse to Rob... I go to a lot of the Disney bars, <laughs> and yet this is one I come back to repeatedly. I love it here. I think it's a great vibe. You've got the cool inside-outside thing. You've got um, the incredible view. You can watch both. Uh, you can watch Epcot fireworks from here, at least. And you kind of need to go and lean against the glass, which I'm not super comfortable with. I actually attribute this bar to helping me cope with my fear of heights because now I can actually, I'm going to demonstrate, I can actually now walk up to the railing oh my and God. stand here and not freak out. And you're not going to fall. <laughs> okay, I can't look over. <laughs> but I can walk up to the railing now and I think it's because I've come here and like, you just, you know, you sit here for a while, you chill out, it's a very like relaxing environment and suddenly it's like, oh, this isn't so scary anymore. So yes. what was your rate rating out of ten? Out of ten, you could do decimal do points. I did ten? nine point two. Well, I said have nine point two. Like a, what's, like, yeah, no, the, the perfection is unobtainable. All right. Unattainable. We're setting our standards. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say like eight point eight. Okay. And I'm gonna qualify that by a couple of things. They have some good cocktails, but I think their cocktail menu isn't as broad as I might like it's it It's very be. narrow in terms of it's Spanish-inspired. Yeah. And also, I've come here on more than one occasion where you order something and they say, oh, we're out of that. And that's frustrating. That was maybe supply the old post-COVID supply chain, but yeah. It, it, that it, is it, that it is a property-wide problem right now. It, yeah. it can be hard to get in here sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It's not hard to get in. It's hard to get a good seat. All the, yeah, I mean, in terms, it, it does have the benefit of there are some resorts, some of the resorts are much harder to get into than others. If you're going to the monorail loop or... Oh, they won't let you in. Lake They'll resorts, always let you in here. Yeah. They don't let you in, but they will always let you into Coronado. Yeah, and so you park, never yeah. have a problem getting into park at the resort to come up here. Um, right. Yeah. That's big, it, by the way. It's, yeah. that's a, it's, being, being able to get in... Yeah. That's something in my 20 years of living here has changed so much. It used to be so easy to get into places. It never places. mattered, and now it does. Um, I was going to say 8.2, just to leave some room in case we find better yeah. things down the line. That was really it. All that right, was... so uh, Jill, you didn't go to MIT, but your brother did. If we average those three, what do we get? Uh, 9.2, 8.8, .8, and an 8.2. Uh, that actually gives us an, like an 8, between 8.2 and 8.8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8.75. Okay. Uh, let's say 8.75. Okay, Sorry. great. And the editor can actually do the math and, and then we'll have put a number on the screen. Like, we can put a little graphic on the screen that says you scored an 8.75. Uh, this is absolutely a place you want to go. This is uh, a great place to chill. Great food. Great menu. And if you don't like it, there's like three other bars, four other bars you can walk to if, within a few hundred feet. Very true. So we got three bridges. We have Rick's. We have uh, the bar downstairs. Oh, here's a quick tip. If you are in Coronado, uh, over in the actual, like, this is Grand Destino Tower, which is the, the new side. You've got the older uh, conference center side over there. There's a restaurant over there called Maya Grill. Great food. But if you like cocktails, if you like old-fashioned specifically, they have its... Uh, an chocolate old old-fashioned. It's a chocolate old-fashioned. It's called an Oaxacan old-fashioned. And it's got uh, chocolate bitters and, like like this Mexican chili oil in it that is a plus, highly recommended. All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of WWAF. We'll see you next time. We'll, new bar, new time, new station, whatever. See you next time. Cheers. I should say now that I immediately put on a goofy movie when I got home. I admit I've avoided it because it kind of forces me to consider uncomfortable things like the existence of Max confirms that Goofy at one point in his life had a sex life. 
No, 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 no. Wait. That's the other show. Okay. Jeez. Anyway, I just don't like to imagine the Goofy likes to, you know. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, so, it's cool that the Fab Five and everyone else seems to have turned their backs on Mrs. Goof. Uh, I'm not even sure where she is, but we all have one of those couples in our lives where people have to cut someone out at some point. The movie did confirm a few things for me, including the fact that Goofy makes a living taking pictures of small children, which, well, yeah, of course he does. Anyway, the soundtrack is good. I can back Rob up on that. I, I don't know that I'd put it in my top five, but it's certainly welcome in his. And that does it from Dahlia Lounge with its stunning views and amazing menu. You should consider adding this to your list of places to go next time you visit the Walt Disney World Resort. And until next time, this is Eric from WDWAF. So that's where it is. I feel like we need to relitigate some of this. I feel like I wasn't on top of my game. I feel like collectively we kind of painted ourselves into a corner on some of these. And Hillary, with how many degrees of music do you have? Three. Three. <laughs> totally. That, wait, wait, wait. Let me just say, that does not make me a better opinion or anything. It's just all like what hits you when it hits you. But I have feelings. I have feelings. Yeah. It's, I, I don't, you don't have to have degrees in music to like know what's good. Yeah, like but I watched. it helps. I watched that Goofy, a Goofy movie, and I felt like. If I were a certain age in a certain time, the movie would have hit a certain way, right? And that's probably all the way back. And we did discuss, by the way, sorry about the wind in that clip. There's a lot of wind. Um, Top of the world. Is also, hard. we had a very interesting conversation and some more drink orders and things that I was recording on the <laughs> camera, but you know what? I wasn't recording them. Yeah. We so that whole thing twice. We, we lost a lot of that. Um, Goofy movie, I feel like that's the big wow. Goofy movie and Nightmare Before Christmas. And the look, Danny Elfman, very accomplished, very prestigious composer. You can identify any Danny Elfman song in like two notes. And the way you identify them is like, none of those notes belong together. And then it makes a song that you're like, oh, they actually, this dude made them belong together. So in terms of difficulty, Danny Elfman wins. So that's called dissonance. Hillary Morton, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's called dissonance. But I feel like Hillary has opinions on this. I have things I might say. Again. Number one, I feel like a, uh, a Macon and Ashman girl. It, it belongs, Let's start there. Something by Macon and no. Ashman belonged in the top five. I will tell you what belongs in the top five. No disrespect to Jill or Piano Rob. Great opinions, whatever. Um, and I just, I'm just another opinion. You have to put Little Mermaid in there. Cause, cause that was their first kind of, well, after like Little Shop of Horrors, Little Mermaid. That was a great make it an Ashman. Slapped. Movie. Yeah. It slap. It slaps. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and like there's Careful, some... Hillary. You'll end up with no legs off to carry you around all weekend. <laughs> uh, I agree. I agree. And then Beauty and the Beast is just when, like, Hollywood started paying attention. Right. It's not like Beauty and the Beast is better than Little Mermaid. I don't they're know. They're almost like the same thing to it me. It really is. They're, they're, like, they're like a, a tale everybody knows. As old as time. Yeah. It's old as time. Yeah. Um, and these these the music almost, because these were, like, released at a very, it's like Little Mermaid came out and then, Boom, Boom they yeah. Put out another banger. Yeah. Right? And, and Beauty and the Beast, I mean, a lot of that stuff belongs there. I love the whole soundtrack to Beauty and the Beast. Hillary had a wild card, though. Hillary pulled out a movie I saw recently, The Jungle Book. Y'all are sleeping on The Jungle Book. There's been a couple in the chat calling for Jungle Good. Book. Good. Well. Yeah. So let me just say that The Jungle Book is actually my favorite Disney movie. And I know that that's not a normal thing. And I'm not trying to just be like totally like you know, individual and a total elitist about it. I love The Jungle Book, and... <clears throat> and I must go to fetch the water. That ain't, that's not even, that like I, the that's not even the That's not even the banger. There's so many good songs in The Jungle Book, and, it, like, Lou Prima is on the soundtrack. Like, it's... Ooh, it's ooh, ooh. 
I want to be like you. Ooh, ooh. I want to walk like you. The Don't forget. Hey, one from, it says we just had, uh, it says we just had Happily Ever After. That's what friends <laughs> are for. That's what we call the low Shere point Khan. in the jungle book, but Eric just wanted to show Shere off Khan his range. knew how to bring the heat. Um, that's, no, that, no that's, those are the buzzards that sing that. Was it? I yeah. don't know. That's the low point of the Shere jungle Khan book. For all we know, I don't know. I, don't I, know. I will say, okay. I might have been drinking when I watched the movie recently. Sure. Um, I, mean, I will say my number one. You already did. Yep. No, I haven't said it yet. No, but somebody else did. It's Hunchback. Yep. Um, the music in Hunchback, even though Hunchback is a downer of a movie, and it's it, it gets to the dark it's places. It's an inspiring tale of a young man that just wants to ring a bell. <laughs> <laughs> but out there, God Help the Outcasts, Hellfire, that soundtrack is insane. The music is amazing. I love Hunchback, and... I don't watch it a lot because it it gives like it's I, all the feels. It's difficult to watch. It is difficult to watch. Like but a car crash. They they bring a, the jolly goat in there just to, for like some. Mm -hmm. No, Lee can't watch it. She yeah, cries because of how mean. I, I, they do, I do. I do. I do cry. Just because the they're mean to him, she cries. Yeah. When I so I went to see it in the theaters. They can't hear you. Well, I can tell you, and you can hear okay. yourself. Okay. She went to see it in the theaters. When they tie him to the wheel. When they tie him to yeah. the wheel. Yeah. Fool's Day. It's I awful. I know. I agree. I I ball I balled through it too. But the musically. If I'm just flexing my music muscle, which I don't intend to do because everyone has... We well, just all have opinions, and that's why there's art. That's why there's so many different kinds of things. We all like different things, and that's great. I just think musically, Hunchback is superior to everything. To everything. No, sorry. To, to Disney animated movies. It's possible. And, and by the way... Tying people to a wheel on April Fool's Day. It, it's just, we're just had April Fool's Day. And if you do that to people, just please reevaluate your life. That's mean. Please write your senators. That's not acceptable. That's not, <laughs> not cool behavior. All right. We have some super chats we want to get to real quick. Uh, hopefully I can read them. Hillary, you're going to have to read them because you have glasses and I just need glasses. What am I reading? The, the super chats on the bottom. Yeah, right by your chin on the monitor. Here's a few <laughs> details for your next AF destination from someone also still in Florida and not in Japan. That's Is that Wendy? It's no, cool. that's pretty cool. That's Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Sorry. Yep. Thank you, Wendy. Yep. What else do we have, Hillary? Um, just, I can't see this at all. I can't see with the person. I don't know how Tom does it. Oh, this is a great show. Glad right. to have something to watch on Thursdays. Hope my namesake makes an appearance on WDWAF, and that is something lounger. Tune in lounger. Tune in lounger. Thank well, you. thank you very much. And actually, we are going to have a chance for you to choose where a future episode of WDWAF is filmed. And there any more? Look at this. Yes. Look at all this money. We're, we got it up to like 12 bucks so far. No, that's, that's it. it. Okay. <laughs> okay, 11 bucks. I, I also think, I also agree that Lion King has to be in there. Um, but we have to acknowledge... I, okay, Piano Rob, I met you once. I think the Goofy movie is complete nostalgia. Because I'm, I'm three years older than you, and I totally missed the Goofy movie. Yeah. And I went to watch it actually after you performed. And I was like, oh, because I have a friend who loves it. And I watched it, and I was like, oh, what's the deal? And they're like, no, it's just because we were young and we loved it. So I think... Also, a Goofy movie, like... Why do people like Max? He's terrible. He's a mopey, whiny, just like every teenager. Look, I hate all teenagers, and if you don't hate teenagers, then you're a teenager, and thanks for watching. But <laughs> teenagers are a pain in the ass. Am I right or am I right? Um, I can't As someone who firm. teaches teenagers every day, yep. Mallory is a high school choir director, if you didn't know. Uh, she deals with these monsters every day. And you know what kids do have, though, these days? The audacity. They have the audacity. The kids have the audacity. I will say this. If we were saying any Disney movie, Mary Poppins is right up in that. But I know we're talking about animated, but I, I saw some people commenting oh, on that. But yeah. the Mary Poppins music. And also, Feed the Birds is Walt Disney's favorite song yeah. ever. So that's just we, classic. We also... Look, there's... All these songs on Main Street are Happiest Millionaire stuff is great and whatever. We did qualify in the clip that did not get recorded that we were going to do animated. We also had a lengthy discussion about Frozen. 
because I really respect Bobby Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez. They have some amazing stuff. I feel like people are adults are sick of Frozen, we especially just, after yeah. lockdown. If you have kids, you probably saw or listened to one or both Frozen movies a thousand times. So we did discuss it. Frozen has some. I gotta admit, Frozen has some bangers. Oh Frozen yeah, Frozen Two has some bangers, but. Because everyone's sick of it. Do you want me to break, break down Let It Go musically, or do we not have time for that? Lee has a question. Okay. I would just like to put on the record that in the part that was cut out, I nominated Aladdin. In the part that was cut out, Lee nominated Aladdin. Tarzan was discussed specifically for its Trash in the Camp song. That, that is a banger. Phil Collins is my birthday mate. He'll be in my heart. For a long time. Yeah, for a long time. No All matter right. what anybody says. No. So let me just say something about Frozen for just a second. I actually think that Frozen Two has better music than Frozen One, but that's an opinion. Don't be like, well, she has degrees, so she knows. And no, it's it all comes down to opinion. But what it, what's great about Let It Go, musically, is that it keeps trying to go to the top and it doesn't quite get there, and that's why there's a payoff for it. So it's Let It Go. Let it go, 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 it gets closer, do, 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 and then that's the payoff. So, like, musically, it, it, like, crescendos to a climax. I, I'm not supposed to talk about climaxing on this show, but it crescendos <laughs> to a climax. Right, that's one of the words I asked you specifically not to say. So, but, but, but let it go is, is, is a very smart song so it's but not also like the songs um there's so many love is an open door is a great song yeah whatever the crap that olaf sings is hilarious and cute you know there's there's all kinds of stuff and everyone's just tired of it the right lopez's now. are amazing songwriters and they have a number of credits um on broadway did, it, did they do avenue q oh i'm not sure did I they think, i think they did avenue q i think they're involved in book of mormon like well, I'm not allowed amazing. to talk about either of those shows on this show. He told me, don't go in talking. Luka Mormon is out of bounds. Yeah. Having a cue way out of bounds. We're going to go to one more room. We do the WD, hashtag WWAF. Is your room WWAF? We went to our friend Axel, who some of you know and love, and uh, we checked out his Explorer's Canteen. This is what we found. Here we are at Axel's Explorer's Canteen. This is a bar he's built in his house that's highly themed on Disney stuff, such as uh, the Adventures Club, Society of Explorers Adventures. Uh, tell us a little bit about it, actually. Well, the Lost and Unfound is from uh, Skipper Canteen. So this place basically is if you would make a baby with Skipper Canteen, Jock Lindsay, some Trader Sam's in there, because uh, I do have the Black Pearl. Um, I do have the Stereoscope, which, weirdly enough, is a Carousel of Progress. There's a little Jungle Cruise boat up there as well in the sea fez, of course, the prayer flags. And then this is a Joe Rody artwork signed by Joe Rody himself. And then I have my uh, lamp, which probably I made myself. A little adventurous lamp hold up, held up by my monkey. And then oh, I have snow some shoes. Uh, snowshoes because of course, Florida. And then this one is a prop uh, from the Disney parks. The other one I, I made myself. There's some pictures on the wall. Captain Nemo, Jules Verne, and of course, evil Tony Baxter. You have Captain yeah. Nemo, but you don't have Captain EO. Yeah, that one I couldn't do. I'm, uh, there's, a, there's limits to my kindness. It's worth there. pointing out, you and I have some similar aesthetic, my office yes. and, and your... Well, I'm including this map. This map, I do, did have a. Which is inspired by jocks. Yes, and I did have a friend that painted um, smaller uh, icons on it, like the Nautilus, Hyperion, and then and the Jungle Cruise boat, and of course, again, the Sea Patch. I have this little uh, desk area that has a, a map, some interesting plates that are from the original Explorers Club, which was a restaurant that operated only two years in Disneyland Paris. Um, my map, my Mickey lamp, nothing to do with adventures. 
Trader Sam's, he's still allowed in here. And then I have my uh, shrunken net cards, Nautilus, Piranha, Rocketeer. Of course. Uh, yeah, of course. You gotta have the Rocketeer. I mean, it's, it's a big mix. Then the Skipper Canteen mugs. Remember when they had those? Oh, yeah. And then Jungle Cruise had a shrunken head, once again. And then this is the newspaper from uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The Witchcraft book is also at uh, Trader Sam's in California. I think they took it out because it was too... Yeah, too insensitive. Not a problem at Axel's house. Not at all. And we have, of course... Jose. Uh, Jose. Oh, I have a whale up there. Monstro. And then fertility. Oh, I, fertility wait to... I have a fertility idol in my house, too, which is funny because between the two of us, we don't have any kids. And then <laughs> this is something I made myself. So this is a mix between some my own idea of what the entrance of Jungle Cruise looked like before and now with the paddles and the spears. Um, Artifacts no longer taken as payment from Jock Lindsay's. Uh, this is something you can see at Disney's Polynesian as well. Annette. I have one more Annette right there behind some bottles. Um, a Hollywood Tower bellhop hat, original from Disneyland Paris. Some more mugs. Do you want to explain what's, what, what we see here, Eric? Sure, these are Jeff Granito. Uh, I think, did I give these to you? Yes, you did. Yeah, these are Jeff Granito. I thought you were going to go straight to the bourbon, actually. Uh, there's a good selection of bourbon here. Small but mighty with uh, some Blantons and Buffalo Trace, things across the spectrum. Uh, Eagle Rare in the back. So uh, you've done very well considering you don't drink bourbon. I know. I did have a two of the cooler, the Shrunken Head, Dead Head Bottle, and uh, the Monkey. And then some more, uh, some more mugs up there. And then, You've even got a little Jungle Cruise boat over here. It's I do. Hidden. This is the, uh, well, a lot is hidden because there's only so much space. Uh, this is an ice cream float, I think. Right. That's from the, that's from Disneyland. Yes. The ice cream. Yes. Right. A nice refrigerator down here, by the way. Well, for beer, of course. Sure. And then a map that I might have gotten from uh, somebody yeah. famous. Uh, that is from the Morton Collection, I believe, by way of, you know, World Market or something. And then seating-wise, yeah, I do have a... My zebra that is uh, spread out here. Yeah, that, that is it. It feels like I'm in my own office with a lot of the same. We have a lot of similar stuff. We've collected a lot of similar stuff. And then I'll, I'll see something that I like and I'll say, Axel, you can get this or you'll see something you like so you can get this. But your touches are so much more like a lounge and a bar and mine are much more like an office. I really I really love it in here. I've, I've had, had a few drinks in here in my time. Oh. That's why it's uh, more of a lounge and less of <laughs> an office. Yeah, you can't get yeah. anything done in here. That is it. And it's always, we're always adding on. There's always new things coming on. Yeah, that's how we, how we grow. The map, by the way, was sent in by one of your... Uh, one of your, uh, your... That's pure. Pure. Yes. Yeah. So that one is uh, shown here. And then, of course, I uh, went over this. The Kungaloosh uh, book... Just quite interesting, quite fun stories. Yeah, that is a uh, that is my little. Well, Axel, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Well, we're, we we are looking to find more interesting Disney themed rooms, and uh, we'll be doing more of these in the future. And we're back. And we're back. Look, Axel's place is amazing, right? Yes, and I've been to the old Axel's place, but not the new Axel's right, place. Right, he did so. move and relocate his bar. Axel and I have the same couch, the same it, paint map, color, the same yeah. Propeller. I got the diving bell. He was really jealous. He Axel, it's good to see. You. No, he's uh, not here. Yeah, we we really do live in two separate places. Axel and I have a lot of the same aesthetic. Mine is more. I guess they're similar. I don't. They're very similar. They're very similar. Mine's an office. His is a bar. Um, but we like the same things. So what can I say? Um, we want to give you an opportunity, though, again, to submit your room. So uh, you go to Twitter and uh, hashtag WWAF or hashtag WDW Cribs. Cribs. 
either one of those. And if you have a room you'd like to share, put some video, put some uh, still photos in there and do it. Also, we want you to help us pick future bars that we go to visit. So uh, in the chat, Jake's going to put up some uh, potential hashtags. You can use, uh, we're, we're looking at potentially going to the top of the world, Abracadabra. Uh, I can't read that one. Ale and Compass. Um, Tune In Lounge. Yep. What's the last one? Baseline. Baseline Tap House. We know we're going there. We call it daycare in my family for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and vote for places you'd like to see us go on a future episode. And, uh, by the way, this show is brought to you by WIGS, the WWNT Interglobe Society. You go to uh, www.nt.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash WWNT. Uh, and learn all about how, key, how you can be a WIGS member and uh, earn all sorts of different benefits. But mostly, it's just a way to support us and content that we produce. We appreciate all the WIGS out there. Um, to all you WIGS out there, there will be a WIGS post show tonight after we finish in just a few minutes. Oh, really? We're still doing this? You don't have to stay. You can go across the hall to your haunted mansion guest room. No, I'm going to pour another drink. Let's go. So we're just going to pour another one. Ooh, does the bartender uh, need that? Go ahead and, get, and, and give us, in, in the meantime, Hillary. Yes. What is your favorite all-time, from an animated Disney feature, all-time best song? I, I'm going back, yeah. I'm, I'm going back to either... I do love A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes. Woo! Cinderella for the win! It's, that's, hard, that's hard, and I'm on the spot, and I've had a couple cocktails, and I'm a little jet-lagged. But we, we have to... Jet-lagged? You crossed one time zone. Yep, it was hard. Um, so that, that, that Southwest you know Airlines what? jet lag. I might go to feed the birds. That's not animated. Oh, yeah. Well, the, ha, some of it is. Going for Cinderella. Lee wants Cinderella stuff. A dream. Lee is if big on Cinderella. your Our, heart Lee's makes. Jeep. That's the next thing we'll do. One of these episodes oh, we'll go, do you have a Disney-themed Disney vehicle? Because Lee's Jeep is themed after Gus Gus specifically from Cinderella. Oh, and Gus Gus. We've actually seen people tweet when they see her vehicle, like in, in the Animal Kingdom parking lot, someone tweeted that they saw it. That's Lee's Jeep with Gus Gus on it. If you see her, wave. Nice to know who to press charges against when they tweet that. Yeah, that's good. Weirdos. Um, who I... Sorry. You, you threw me on that one. When you wish upon a star? I mean, we got to go classic. I think You're going classic. this again with classic episodes. What do you think? We're gonna redo. Just... We're gonna relitigate the the top five soundtracks classic. I'm gonna say number one, best song in any Disney animated feature is "Go the Distance." Right? There's a reason it's in every fireworks show, right? Uh... Ah. Asking you to sing. I just did. She okay. just did. You need more energy. I don't know. Um. I that that takes a lot of consideration, but I do like I I do like the the golden. Throw just throw a the couple bangers out Disney. there. Throw what? a couple bangers out there. Let's. So like you can mention two or three. We don't care. Nobody here has. What a favorite. Spoonful yeah, of sugar. Spoonful. It's not animated. Actually, Mary Poppins is partially animated. Are you just? Are they just asking me to sing songs? Yeah, somebody just said, mm. sing it, Hillary. How about this? Hold on. Oh. Sh how does the Jane and Michael Banks start? Which part? The Jane and Michael. I like the when Jane and Michael. The, yes. When they're doing the ad? Yes. If you want oh, this yeah. choice position, have a cheery disposition, rosy cheeks, no warts, play games, all sorts. You must be kind. You must be witty. Very sweet and fairly pretty. Take us on outings, bring us sweets. Sing songs, bring sweets. Never be cross or cruel. Never give us castor oil or gruel. Love us as a son and daughter. And never spell a body. Was it barley? barley water. Barley water, if you won't scold and dominate us, we will never give you cause to hate us. We won't <laughs> hide your spectacles so you can't see. 
put toads in your bowl or pepper in your tea. Hurry, Nanny, many thanks sincerely. Jane and Michael, thanks. Most of that job posting is illegal. And he just said, this is what it's like to go to the grocery store with Hillary. This is like, well, yeah, this is what it's like to go to the grocery store with Hillary. Um, that job posting is illegal. You, the Department of Labor are coming after you if you're, yes? Oh, there we go. The results. Top of the world. Okay, we know that's a tough one to go to. Actually, you were just there. Spoiler alert. Oh. Tried to film it last week because I was with DVC members who were staying there, which are the two criteria for going to Top of the World Lounge. But it's Friday. Friday, they closed for a ticketed event. $89. We're like, nope. Then I found out later $89 is open bar. And I was like, yep. Yep. I can make that happen. So we went to Top of the World, but we went, uh, they put us on, Poppy is scratching the carpet. They put us on the um, observation deck outdoors with like a rollaway bar. And I'm like, there's nothing really worth filming there. Right? Yeah. We're going to evaluate their like. The Jim Beam and their, Coke. Yeah, they have Jim Beam and, or they have Jack Daniels and they have uh, barf, two barefoot wines and, and yeah. Michelob Ultra. Right? Nothing's wrong with any, any of so those So we did things, film but... somewhere else on the monorail loop. I don't know if that'll ever make it because, honestly, I'm still working out this show. I'm kind of on my own here working without a net while I'm doing other things. I wasn't super stoked about what we came up with. Top of the world, uh, second place looks like Ale and Compass, then uh, Tune In Lounge, Abracadabra, and last was Baseline Tap House. Because what do they have at Baseline Tap House? Well, mostly beer and pretzels. Beer. Mostly beer, pretzels. Best people watching of all of those, though. Those almonds are so, of, anyway. of, those, of those bars, I will say, because I've been to those, my favorite, Abercadabra Bar. So, I left a very nasty review on Abercadabra Bar's Google page like three or four years ago. Are you that And I person? said their number one trick is that they made all the servers disappear. Oh. Because every time I went there, nobody would come take our order. I sat in there. I probably had accumulated one hour of sitting in there before I ever got served over the three times when I... Tried to go. So the last time we went, though, their server it's getting was better. Great. It's better. Yeah. They have a good. According to Tom, the best bourbon list on property. Now Tom's not referring to all on property. He's really saying Disney, right? Because we know like Polite Pig has the best bourbon selection. Yeah. Even if it's the most overpriced and out of touch bourbon selection on property, but maybe it's possible. Abercrombie Bar. Uh, there's a little Buffalo Trace like distribution issue going on, but we never know. Anyway, Always. Uh, we'll be back next week. Actually, I'm out of town. I'm going up to Kansas because we're, we're going got to some Missouri. Stuff going on. I'll be in Kansas. You can hang out in Missouri all you want. I just land there at the airport and get across the state line as fast as possible. Um, but Piano Rob will be doing an all request show. So next Thursday, all requests. We come back, and all the way until June 1st, it'll be WWAF. So I'm in charge once I get back. I'll be gone next week. Uh, we appreciate you guys hang out. We appreciate you guys hanging out. Jake, is there anything else I need to cover before we go? You did have a request for Spike to be. There will be no Spike to be. I still have bronchitis. <laughs> I had bronchitis last time I sang Spike to be. I took medication. I went to the doctor. Still got bronchitis. Can't stop coughing. I'm sorry, folks. But we will see you next time, next week, and also boxed in tomorrow night at 7 p.m. from 37 feet away in my kitchen. And we'll open all that new Tron merchandise for you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on WWAF. Bye now.